Hi guys, this is Adrian Vandenberg from Whitesnake and Vandenberg and you're listening to Metal Voice. What's happening everyone? This is Neil Turpin and we're here at Rock for Ronnie with the one and only Adrian Vandenberg. One of, my, one of my rock and roll heroes who I saw back in, <laughs> gosh, what year? It must have been 1983? 83, yeah. At the Paramount Theater yeah. in with Staten the, Island. With Metallica opening. Metallica opening, opening. Metallica. yep. <laughs> I think it was Dave, that, was it Dave Mustaine in the band then? That, that was the evening that Dave Mustaine got kicked out of the band. Yeah, that's the evening that he tried to borrow my, my vest. Or was it? My leather jacket vest. Yeah. And I had to go find him to get it back. But well, that, that, that's another story. I, a couple of years ago, uh, somebody sent me a page out of Scott Ian's uh, biography. And he described that evening. And that was the evening that David Mustaine got kicked out of the band because he was shit-faced drunk. And, and um, he was just rolling around screaming uh, during soundcheck. So I didn't know. So I was there at the show in 1983. Yeah, man. And I was a fan of Vandenberg before that because I had the album. Oh, cool. And because the first album was just called Vandenberg. Okay, the that's second, right. The second one was heading for. Okay, Storm. so um, yeah, so the first album had Bert Her Herring on it. Bert Herring, yeah. And you had the song that I remember from the show, and it's in my brain. I can <laughs> I can go back to the retrieval process and retrieve that. It's too late to yeah, stop the right. train. Yeah, I right. thought it sounded great, you know, very, very AOR and like yeah, killer. Yeah. Weird realization, and it's so long ago, you know. When White Snake, you know, when David Coverdale did the 1987 album, and you know, one time I ran into David, and I was coming from the Rainbow. I lived right near there at the time yeah. in the 80s, and this was like 1986, and I'm walking, and he and he got rid of his whole band, and yeah. he was kind of depressed, and he was walking back, and we're in that triangle right by. Um, Palm Avenue and he's walking yeah, right. back to the Mondrian. So I happened to run into David Coverdale. And then what's ironic is the 87 album happened and you were involved with yeah. the band and you were, you know, I mean Sykes was involved with playing on it, but you were touring it and you were there. Well actually I played on the Here We Go Again. Right. That, that was exactly in that time because um, there was no band and uh, David had been asking me, uh, inviting me into the band already since 83. But Vandenberg was doing well, and I thought, I just, I just don't want to, you know, throw the whole thing out right away and um, and jump um, into White Snake. I first wanted to prove something myself, basically, because White Snake already had a couple of lineups, so you know. And after you're in the band, then they they uh, got rid of Vivian Campbell as well. Like I yeah, yeah, and everybody knows by now that. White Snake has been a bit of a revolving door, you know. There's been so many members. But at that time, it was such an exciting band for yeah. me. For me too, you know. It was great because I've been a fan of David's um, ever since he joined Deep Purple, basically, you know. And I mean, it's, when, when he was in his prime, he was amazing. He was untouchable. There were, you know, so different than, than most other rock singers who are more like the screamer kind of guys. And David's got this big, fat, juicy big brown voice you know amazing yeah I saw David in 81 with op opening for Jethro Tull mm. at Madison Square Garden so that's I know a, I know for sure and that was with the old White Snake that's original a weird, that's a weird lineup man. yeah very bluesy yeah you know? yeah would you ever consider um, you know if David Coverdale called you up and said hey you know Adrian um, you know would you like to maybe play some songs somewhere for fun or because that's kind of what happened isn't, isn't it what what happened um, when when you got back together when you got together with David Coverdale after like eight, after the 87 album and all that but then when the lineup you know went away and then he kind of slowly showed up on the radar screen yeah it was a, it was a bit of a strange period because um, when David did that, that album with uh, Jimmy Page um, at that moment White Snake was actually disbanded so I recorded uh, an album with Rudy and Tommy Aldrich and Ron Young called Manic Eden. I we, remember that album. Yeah, we were. I'm still really proud of that album. It's a great album, and I think. And um, I wanted to. Um, we were going to, uh, going touring, but um, 
then David called me up again and said, oh, uh, I decided to, uh, because they only did a couple of shows with Paige. I suppose Paige didn't want to tour again or something, I don't know. And um, so, um, Jesus, that's pretty <laughs> noisy back there. Somebody's screaming his lungs out. Um, and then it was a really hard decision because I wanted to tour with Manic Eden. But at the same time, if I w would have chosen for Whitesnake again, um, uh, or, or uh, f for Manic Eden, sorry, um, then I would have been with Whitesnake for about six years and never played an album because uh, in 1990 I had this wrist uh, problem wh why I couldn't play on the Slip of a Tongue album. So I thought, man, I gotta choose for that because I wanna you know, also have played on one or two uh, Whitesnake albums. So I had to leave my baby behind and the baby was Manic Eden. Yeah, so. Well, that's too bad. Well, I'm glad that you're back and you're rocking. So am I, yeah. yeah it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great. We've been j with my band Vandenberg, we just um, played them uh, Monster of the Ro Rock Cruise. Nice. Got a, new, got a single out, uh, House on Fire, since a couple of weeks. So you're just off the airplane, pretty much. Sorry? You're just off the airplane if you were at Monster uh, yeah, of the Rock. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, I mean, I arrived yesterday. Uh, I stayed for this. Uh, Wendy Dio invited me, and uh, so I thought I'm going to do that. You know, it's great tribute to Ronnie. And you're playing at Rock for Ronnie today? Yes. That's awesome. Yes, with um, Doug Aldrich, Brian Titchy, Michael Devon. Very nice. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, a bunch of... Uh, so it's like White Snake without White Snake, because exactly. everyone's been in White Snake. We're going to do two White Snake songs, so it's going to be fun. That's so cool. So would you ever consider if, um, you know, Bert Herring called you up and begged you to no, do a song? No, with Bert, it's over. I never want to see the guy again, because he, he and the former bass player started six lawsuits against me six uh, lawsuits. Lo and they lost them all they claimed my name my even my you know my your name my name and the band name they said you know we were a part of it and um so we uh, we want to have that name and i said no 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 so i had to defend myself it was six lawsuits cost a lot of money and a lot of negative energy otherwise we could have done like uh, some reunion shows or whatever and we didn't you know so well, that's a shame it is embarrassing and also because when you think you know your friends or something and then 30 years later after um, I was in Whitesnake for 12 years tour all over the world in all the stadiums you name it and they think oh wait a minute there's money to be made you know and then, so they wanted to tour without me like a Vandenberg without Vandenberg so to speak and they had the illusion that they could win, so I, I never need to see those guys again because there was so much lying going on in, that, in those lawsuits. Well, that's really unfortunate yeah, that they, they, Yeah, it's sad. You that know, happened. So it's not going to happen, but right now I've got a great band together since two years, in three years. Singer Matt Levin uh, from... I know Matt's great yeah, guy, great Matt's singer. Great singer. And Sang uh, with Ingve, right? Yeah, he's... And, he's, and, well, and Candle Mass and a bunch of other folks. He survived Ingve. Survived. And somebody yeah. who survived Ingve. My friend Patrick Johansson survived Ingve oh, right, for 12 years. Yeah. Ingve casualties. So yeah, uh, Mats and um, I got two Dutch guys, uh, Koen Herfst and uh, Randy van Elsen, great players. Just check the stuff we did on um, on a um, of Rock Cruise. And Congratulations. We did, we did the last song. Um, I invited uh, Frank Hannon from Tesla in. Nice. I saw that. Together we did. Uh, it's on. Night. It's on uh, one of those uh, websites that. All oh, right, yeah, a blubbermouth. That one. Yeah, that's one. Bori, Borovoj. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Sounds great, yeah. That's awesome. And um, so is there any plans for a new album or any kind of recording yeah, with Mats? Yeah, it's already recorded. Okay. Um, there's a single out called House on Fire with Mats on it. In three weeks, there's going to be second single. And the album is going to come out in um, August. What's the name of the album? Sin, S-I-N. Okay. Sin. Sin, motherfucker, sin. And Oops. <laughs> And, 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 second and the second words. single name? Second single name is, uh, is, is the, the song Sin. Song okay. Sin. And then there's a third one called Light It Up. It's going to come out in probably in about a month and a half or something. Excellent. We're so you guys going to be hitting the, uh, the tour, I mean the, the festivals in Europe this yeah. year? Well, most of them probably next year because um, when the album comes out, you know, most festivals are already pretty much programmed. There's so right. many festivals. That they start programming. So 2024, you're gonna, yeah, hit it hard, and hopefully hit it in the states too. Because great, but these days, you know, it's really hard to play the states because for us as U Europeans, to get a work permit is two thousand dollars per person. So you're already about fourteen thousand before you even start, you know, 
and like everybody knows transportation hotels and everything became so expensive and um, crew so it's difficult it's uh, i was talking to frank frank hannon they have the same problem in europe they wanted to in europe but it, it, it became so expensive that um to cross the ocean to bring bring your stuff to bring your crew you know it, it's interesting so it's really hard to do for, for us we can play Europe you know well I appreciate your honesty and your candidness about this because this is a, a problem that affects all bands Every, yeah it does unless it's, unless uh, the band is you know grossing yeah. big numbers but if a yeah. band's trying to you know climb up the ladder it's it's tough yeah it's tough and I mean there's a reason why Def Leppard and Monty Crew tour together you know they're, they're huge bands and still they tour together uh, the other thing is that what happened in Europe and I know it's the same in, uh, in the States but after COVID um, about half of crew guys who are you know in the in the crew, your guitar tech, your drum tech, or whatever? Um, they got used to to having a, another job, and they didn't want to go back because they didn't know what was going to happen, you know. So about half of the crew guys in, in in Europe, they're not available as crew guys anymore. So the other half that st that still is is twice as expensive, plus twice as busy because they do all the shows. So right now you have to book a crew like more than six months ahead so these are complicated times but but, but you know they're not going to get rid of us so um, we're still here well, i'm excited to watch you today and see you on stage there celebrating yeah, ronnie james dio it's going to be over in a minute you know i had um, a couple of uh, number of years ago when, when, when my good friend rudy sarzo was still with dio they played across the border in germany close to where i live and um, i live in a medium-sized town it's about three hundred thousand people we were having a pizza in the middle of the market square uh, and it was like a, a Thursday evening, all the shops are open and stuff. It was really busy, thousands of people walking around. At the square I was having a, a pizza with uh, Ronnie, with Ronnie James Dio, Rudy Sazo, um, uh, the drummer that used to be in uh, Dio at the time, uh, the ACDC guy. Um, oh, Simon, Phil Simon. Si Simon, Simon Wright. Simon Wright and my parents. Oh wow. And we were having a pizza. Uh, pizza and people were walking by they had no the idea. cafe kind of place right yeah, outdoors. yeah outside you know on the terrace people had no idea it's just beautiful just walked out walked by what, what city is that near Enschede my city is called Enschede what is that near um, it's about two hours away from Amsterdam okay so in Holland, Holland is about this size so it takes you two hours to get from east to west north to south is about two and a half hours it takes you longer to go uh, to, to get to the 7-eleven from here you know so so uh, Adrian, everybody say hi to Maria Ferrero from Adrenaline PR. Well, she could, she don't have to be on the camera, but she must have come here to get you or get somebody because you're just hanging out. I'm just, I saw you it's guys. so awesome, Maria. Thank you for everything because she's she makes everything happen. This is a man's bag. I got it in the men's department. Oh, you did? In case anybody hey, Louis Vuitton. Me. There it is. <laughs> and it's shiny. You could use it as a mirror, too. It's like a mirror in your lipstick. <laughs> Mar Maria Ferrero rocks. That's Legend. all I want to say. You legend, that's why I stopped. <laughs> and you're a legend too, come on. Notorious. <laughs> Not quite B.I.G. <laughs> something something like that. Well, thank you so much, Adrian. It's, it's my honor, and uh, thank you from the Metal Voice.